In May of 2019, I made my first visit to Mayflower Gulch to photograph the Milky Way. The weather forecast looked excellent, and upon hiking in, I found that there was nobody there but me and the creatures in the woods I heard periodically on the hike in. But when I looked up into the sky, all I saw was this. Clouds, clouds, and more clouds. Starting kind of thin at first, but getting thicker and thicker throughout the night until I accepted defeat and headed back to the car for the long drive home, full of disappointment. In this video, I'll share the experience of returning to Mayflower Gulch, as well as photographing the Milky Way at Clinton Gulch Reservoir just up the road, where I joined a number of friends to take advantage of a very clear night. Let's get started. Alright, it is 1 o'clock in the morning and I am in Silverthorne, Colorado, getting ready to head up even higher into the mountains to go and shoot the Milky Way, operating on very little sleep, so we'll do our best to stay with it. I've got a hotel here in Silverthorne, my location is only 20 minutes away, so off we go into the night to see the Milky Way. Let's do it. My first stop on this night was at Clinton Gulch Reservoir, where I met a rather large group of people from a Colorado astrophotography group I am a part of on Facebook. This was a location I had never stopped at before, but I had driven past it many times and I had seen some good photos other people had taken there, so I didn't want to miss the chance to join in on the fun. But I was trying to also move quickly so I would have some time to make it into Mayflower Gulch before Blue Hour arrived in the morning. With all the people there, I chose not to really do any filming while I was there, so as not to disturb any of the people around me with my lights and my chatter and all that. But after taking some time to find the right place to set up, I did get some great shots that I can't wait to share with you right about now. beginning my hike into Mayflower Gulch. There's some old mining cabins back in here and a barn and stuff. Not in real great shape, but I'm gonna try and push to get in there. We'll have some time left to shoot them with the Milky Way, which I'm hoping will be really interesting. I was gonna try and film a little bit while I walk, but I realized that in my snowshoes, it's just super loud, so probably minimize the filming maybe as I take breaks but should be an adventure off we go so since my time was short I just grabbed my whole camera backpack with my probably I don't know 40 pounds of gear and threw it on to hike up this trail 
but it is tiring to be carrying that much. Fortunately, it's only a mile or so in to get to the cabins. And I'm about a third of the mile in right now, but there's enough uphill here. It's definitely uh, giving me a little bit of workout, but we'll keep going. Just to give you a sense of what I'm hiking up here, in the summertime, this is a four by four road. You can bring your off-roader up in here and drive all the way up into the camp in the gulch. But they don't maintain it in the wintertime, so they close the gate and you have to hike in or ski in or whatever you do in the winter. Whew. I'm about three quarters of a mile in now. Taking another breather, let my heart rate stabilize, and then we'll keep it going. All right, I made it to the camp here. Set up here by the barn, you can kind of see my shot there. There we go. So my time here is short before you start to get some light from the sun. So I'm gonna squeeze off a bunch of shots to stack here. But I've been waiting for this shot for two years. And uh, I'm very happy with it right now. Look at that. Welcome to Boston Mining Camp. So for this shot, I've mounted my 16 to 28 lens just because I'm so close to the barn here. I wanted to be able to get the Milky Way over the top. Uh, I think I'm shooting at f 3.2 or 3.5. Um, yeah, let's have a look on the top of the camera here. So yeah, we are at 10 seconds at f3.5, ISO 5000, and I'm going to squeeze off 20 shots or so to stack for noise reduction, and then I'll do a long exposure for the foreground to get a nice clean foreground, a lot of the snow helps. but. When I hiked in here two years ago, there was nobody here. I had the place all to myself. Probably has something to do with the fact that it turned out to be a cloudy night. But there's a few other guys up here this time, but it's all good. Don't mind sharing the spot. And although it's a little chilly, the sky is completely clear and it is completely calm with no wind, which is very nice. <laughs> if it was windy, this would be a lot more brutal. But give you one more look there at my shot. I like it. As you can see, it's starting to get light here in the gulch. Get a good look at uh, all the cabins up in there now. Mountain peaks around us. Pretty nice views. All right, now begins the hike back out to the car. It is getting chilly, so time to go. Take one more look up into the gulch here before I head into the woods. Not a bad place to hang out for a little while though. So 
So just for reference, uh, the snow in here on the four-wheel drive road is pretty crusty, so may not necessarily need the snowshoes, although if you're worried about critters in here at night or during the day, the noise might not be a bad thing, because as you can hear, they do make a healthy amount of noise, so. Things you don't notice when you're walking in the dark is old structures like that. Probably had something to do with the mining days. But yeah, this is actually the first time I've walked on this trail in any degree of daylight, so it's a little different experience. See a little more than I'm used to. Fun. With all these tall pine trees in here, I imagine this would just be amazingly beautiful after a fresh snowfall. But I'll have to try that sometime too. It's definitely a fun hike in here. I'm almost back out to the car, but got an interesting view of the amphitheater that I was in, back up in there. And then turning around the other way, we're getting some uh, first morning light on that peak back there above the Climax Mine. So, not a bad place to be. made it back to the car. It's probably nearly seven o'clock now after I left the hotel at one o'clock in the morning. But I get my stuff back in, drive the 20 minutes back down to the hotel and get ready to head home. But I think it's fair to say this was a very productive night. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Before we end this video, I've got to fit in just a little bit of shameless self-promotion. First of all, if you uh, have been following along with me on my social media or you're on my email newsletter, you know that my 2022 calendars are now available for order. I've been taking pre-orders on my website, but actually by the time you watch this, they will probably be on their way to me from the printer and will be ready to ship out as soon as you place your order. You can place your order now to be first in line or go ahead and get your order in here very soon. They make great Christmas gifts, so get some early Christmas shopping done maybe, or just get one for yourself for next year to be ready to go. Also, if uh, watching all these videos of me out and about in the field looks like a great time and that's something you'd like to be a part of, you should know that I am now doing photography workshops up in Rocky Mountain National Park. You can join me for a night sky trip or maybe a sunrise trip. And in September, during the elk rut, my sunrise trips will include some elk viewing time as well to watch the elk rut. It's always an exciting time to watch the wildlife up in Rocky from a safe distance, of course. I've been going up there for a few years to watch the elk, so I've got some prime locations that I go to regularly, and I'll be happy to share that experience with you. 
if you want to get a taste of what that's like, you can watch my elk rut video from last year that I posted here on YouTube. And if group workshops are not your style, I also do one-on-one -on -one teaching, both in person, rather in your home, or maybe in the field, or if you're not here local to where I'm at in Colorado, I also do teaching sessions on Zoom. One-on-one -on -one classes are all booked by the hour, and you do get a bulk discount. If you buy four hours or more, you get 25% off. And if you do one of those workshops in Rocky Mountain National Park, you get a similar discount of 25% off for more, four or more people on one booking. You can book all of those on the classes and workshops tab on my website. I'll leave a link in the description below, as well as a link to my 2022 calendars. And I would love for you to sign up for one of my classes. All right, we'll wrap it up there. Make sure you uh, hit that subscribe button to go ahead and subscribe to my channel to help me keep building it. I also put a list in the description of the equipment I am using for photography and these videos. If that's something you're interested in learning more about or getting some of that for yourself, if you use the Amazon affiliate links I've added next to my equipment, I will get a very small percentage from those sales to help my small business and it will not cost you anything extra. So if you're shopping for some equipment, please use one of those links to uh, give me a little boost. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.